welcome to another NGen Math 8 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 3, Lesson 2 on Reflections. Now reflections are a particular type of transformation and we talked about the general idea of transformations in the last lesson. So it's really important before you kind of head into one of these to just review the general idea, right? A transformation is simply any, any mapping, any time we take an object in the plane, it could be in the coordinate plane, the Euclidean plane, we apply some kind of a rule to it, it could be algebraic or something else, and map those points of the geometric object somewhere else, right? We also saw the idea in the last lesson that some transformations are rigid motions, things that don't change lengths and they don't change angles, they don't change shapes, right? The big question is, What's the deal with a reflection, right? Is it a rigid motion? Is it not a rigid motion? So let's jump right into a reflection in the first exercise. Here we go, exercise number one. Now you're gonna need a lot for this exercise. You're gonna need tracing paper, you're gonna need um, a straight edge, you're gonna need a protractor to measure angles, but we got it all. So exercise number one, let's take a look. Given the line segment AB below, along with angle EFG, do the following, letter A. Use tracing paper to reflect angle EFG across AB. Label the image angle, angle E prime, F prime, G prime. Okay, great. So let's review how you do a reflection with tracing paper, right? I'm gonna take my tracing paper out, I'm gonna put it over my angle and what's known as my line of reflection. Literally, the line of reflection is your mirror, if you will, the thing that's mirroring your object, right? So I'm gonna trace out ang the angle and I'm gonna trace out the line segment and please make sure on your tracing paper to label all those points like G, F, E, and A and B, right? The reason why is that then I'll take my tracing paper, right? And I'll flip it, okay? And once I flipped it, then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make sure that that line segment lines up perfectly with itself, okay? So it's almost as if I'm just, doing this, using the line segment as kind of a, an axis, right, that I'm flipping over, and now it's a piece of cake, right? Now I can draw these points, right, and I can label them. This is going to be G prime, this is going to be F prime, this is going to be E prime, and I'm going to just freehand the actual line segments to save ourselves a little bit of time. Okay, and now there's my angle of reflection. I'm just gonna get rid of this now. There's no need for it. All right, it's gone. And there's my reflection. Now the name reflection probably makes all the sense in the world. You know, if this angle kind of walked up to a mirror and looked at itself in the mirror, this is what it would see, right? It's a reflection of it in the mirror with the mirror being segment AB. All right, second part of this problem, letter B. Using a metric ruler, measure each of the following segment lengths in centimeters. All right, so this is simple enough. I wanna know the length of EF and I wanna know the length of FG. I wanna know the length of E prime F prime and I wanna know the length of F prime G prime. This is simple enough, take your ruler Measure it, try to measure it to the nearest tenth of a centimeter, all right? So that's the nearest millimeter, but express it in terms of a decimal, and come up with these four lengths, then we'll go over them. Pause the video now and take a little bit of time. All right, well, let's do it. Let me take a look at EF, all right? This is simple enough. Now, one thing I would advise you, right, is that depending on the photocopier that was used to actually copy these pages, your measurements might differ just a little bit from my measurements. But what I can see in this particular measurement, let's go back to the board just for a second, is that, because I think it's a little bit easier to see, is that this thing is five centimeters long. So EF, is pretty much exactly five centimeters long. Now, if yours was a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, that could be just due to sort of photocopying issues. On the other hand, if I bring, oops, <laughs> if I bring it up here um, to GF and rotate it down, this one's not a really, really nice number, but it might be more on the order of, I don't know, I'm gonna say 4.2 centimeters and again if you had 4.3 or 4.1 that's completely okay right 
Now, I'd like to measure the images, right, uh, the lengths of the image segments, E prime, F prime, and F prime, G prime. Now, we'll save the time of dragging the ruler over there. Probably not a great surprise, what you find is that they are the same length as their pre-images. All right? So it looks like a reflection doesn't change the length of a line segment. Awesome. But what about the measure of the angle itself? Is this angle and this angle the same angle measurement? I'd like you to pause the video now, use your protractor to measure this angle, measure this angle, and see how those angle measurements compare. All right, well, it's a little bit tricky because of the way these things are oriented, right? You know, I mean, I kind of have to bring my, my protractor out, all right, and then maybe have to kind of rotate it, something like that. And what I'll find is if I position it correctly, that angle EFG is 120 degrees, all right? By the way, there's a question that we forgot to answer. We'll get to that in just a moment. If, on the other hand, I take this thing <laughs> and I move it over here and I rotate it in some way that allows me to measure the angle, what I find is that that angle is also 120 degrees. All right, now by the way, the question that we never really filled in, although we discussed, was what is true about a segment and its image from a line reflection? Well, they have the same length. By the way, it'd also be okay if you said that they were congruent. That would be really awesome. And likewise, right, this question, what is true about an angle and its image from a line reflection? Well, they have the same measure. So what does that mean about a reflection? It means a reflection is a rigid motion, right? And that kind of makes sense. I mean, think about how we actually did the reflection. We literally traced this angle along with its line segments. We then flipped it and copied over it. So it makes sense that this angle over here, right, along with the lengths of the line segments that are creating the angle is identical to its pre-image, right? So a reflection is an example of a transformation that is a rigid motion. It doesn't change the size or the shape of the object in the reflection. Let's talk about that a little bit more, right? Reflections are also known sometimes as flips. Literally, we take this object, right, with a line of reflection, we're always kind of flipping it across the line, and when we do so, we're always ending up with an image that is congruent to the pre-image. Literally, these two things can lie exactly on top of each other, all right? Normally, we're not gonna be reflecting, let's say, coconut trees or palm trees, or I think it's a coconut tree. There's coconuts hanging from that. Um, you know, whatever it is, we're not normally gonna be reflecting that. We're typically gonna be reflecting things like triangles, squares, rectangles, etc. But the idea is still the same. If this coconut tree walked up to this mirror, this is the image it would see. All right, let's play around with this a little bit more. Because reflections are extremely important, right? You know, they are rigid motions. They create these images that are congruent to the pre-image. So if I take this triangle, let's say, that's got maybe this side length that's eight centimeters and this angle that's 39 degrees, if I can find the board, when I reflect this across that line of reflection, that image length is going to be 8 centimeters, and that image angle is also going to be 39 degrees. Now granted, you might be like, well, what about that length and that length and those two angles? Yeah, they're all going to be maintained in its image as well. Okay, an extremely important concept. So let's keep going. Let's understand a little bit more about the geometry of reflections. Exercise number two. In the diagram below, segment M prime N prime is the image of segment MN after a reflection in line AB. Letter A asks us to draw a line segment from M to M prime, mark its intersection point with AB as point C. 
All right, this is simple enough. All the question is asking me to do is draw a line, line segment from M to its image, M prime. So just a line segment. And then it wants me to mark the intersection point as point C. All right, that, that, that's easy. Okay, letter B asks us to do exactly the same thing. Draw a line segment from N to N prime and mark its intersection point with AB as point D. Well, why don't you go ahead and do that on your own and then we'll, we'll do it together. All right, well, this is simple enough. Again, all I'm trying to do is connect these two with a segment. Trying to connect these two with a segment. Still trying to connect these two with a segment. Oh, what I wouldn't give for an actual ruler. All right, there we go. And I want to mark that intersection point. Let me just, as point D. All right, great. Letter C, very important, letter C and letter D. What special points are C and D on the two line segments you just drew? In other words, M, M prime and N, N prime. Verify with a ruler. All right, so in other words, right, point C is a very important point on segment M, M prime, and point D is a very important point on segment N, N prime. What are those points called? Pause the video now and see if you can come up with a piece of terminology in your head that you've already seen in this course. Well, I'm hoping you said that they were the midpoints of their segments, right? So let's get that down. Um, they are the midpoints. They are literally, so they are the midpoints of M, M prime, and n, n prime, right? And you can tell that actually using the ruler, if you bring the ruler over, and again, your, your measurements might vary a little bit, but we can see that this is three centimeters in length and this is three centimeters in length. Likewise, this one also works out pretty nicely as long as your pages haven't been shrunk much compared to mine. Those are both two centimeters in length. And that probably makes a lot of sense, right? The whole point of a reflection is kind of that the point and its image are the same distance away from the line of reflection, right? If I'm looking in a mirror, then my, body, it, my body's reflection in the mirror looks like it's as far from the mirror as I am. So same idea, N and N prime are as far away from each other. Now there's one other really important fact about these things, letter D. What type of angle do the segments M, M prime and N, N prime create with line AB, with the line of reflection? Use a protractor to verify. So what, what kind of angles are these and what kind of angles are these? Think about that for a moment. Use your protractor to check and then we'll get it down. Well, they're all right angles, right? All four of these are right angles, and all four of these are right angles. All right, and you can use your protractor to check. Um, maybe we'll do that with just one. But they're all right angles. All right, very, very important. You know, if I take this thing and I kind of, whoops, and I bring my protractor up here, and I just orient it correctly, Right, then what I can see is that the segment, the segment that is connecting the pre-image point with its image point is perpendicular to the line of reflection. So the line of reflection has two important sort of relationships between the point and its image. One, right, is that it cuts that segment in half. These two points are on opposite sides of the line of reflection at an equal distance away from it. And on top of that, right, these are also perpendicular to one another, right? That line segment is perpendicular to the line of reflection. Let's summarize that actually in the next slide, right? The line of reflection. The line of reflection serves as the perpendicular bisector 
of the segment that connects a point with its image point. So, you know, here, if I can move this out of the way, right, I've got this line of reflection, I've got a point, and I've got its image point, okay? So I have literally reflected this point over. The idea is, if I draw that line segment in, this line of reflection both bisects this segment, in other words, it cuts it into two segments that are of equal length, let me get that little thing out of there, equal length, and it's perpendicular to the segment. These are important facts about the line of reflection and how it relates to a point and its image point. Last problem, real simple, exercise number three. Triangle ABC has been reflected in line S below to produce image triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Connect each vertex with its image point and then mark any right angles that are created. All right, well I'd like you to pause the video right now and try to do exactly what the problem's asking you to do. Take a few minutes. All right, I like to have you kind of do this one all on your own simply because you've got to be able to understand the terminology, even things like connect, right, a point with its image point. You know, for instance, that means, right, I should be taking point A and I should be connecting it to point A prime, right, using a straight edge. I can connect those two points. It also means I should connect point C to is its image point, C prime. And I should connect point B to its image point, point B prime. Now, if your first reaction to that is, wow, that just kind of created a cool picture that I want to stare at a lot, then you're my kind of math student, right? Because that kind of looks cool. There's a bunch of different shapes in here now, including some really pretty cool looking trapezoids. But let's not worry about that right now. The problem also asks us to mark any right angles, right? And the whole idea here is that we're gonna have a right angle here, a right angle here, and a right angle here. Right, now you might say, well that's not all the right angles, and I would agree, I mean if you really, really wanna take this seriously, you know, you should say, well that's a right angle, that's a right angle, that's a right angle. But once you kinda of have one right angle there, all of them have to be right angles, so, you know, there they are. Okay, very, very important idea, this perpendicular bisector idea, right, of the line of reflection. All right, let's do a summary. So today, we saw one of the primary ways that we transform a figure, reflections, right? With a reflection, you always have points. You have a line of reflection that you're actually going to flip those points or that geometric figure over. What we saw today was that a reflection is an example of a rigid motion, right, a transformation that makes that gives us an image that is congruent or identical to our pre-image. It's just in a different location. But we also saw some other things about reflections, primarily being that if you look at the line of reflection relative to a point and its image, that that line of reflection is the perpendicular bisector of the segment that would connect the point with its image, meaning it cuts that segment in half and it's perpendicular to it. We're going to see a lot of other types of transformations, most of which are going to be rigid motions and some of which aren't, in the next few lessons. For now, I just want to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 8 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.